Welcome to Atlanta Live. We're so glad to have you join us this evening. I'm Archbishop Ken McNatt from House of Hope in Hamilton, Georgia, and we're so delighted that we can come and be a part of your life, and I believe the Lord is going to do something very, very special. We have some amazing guests tonight, some amazing music ministry, and they are ready to release what God has put in their spirit. The only question is, are you ready to receive it? If you're ready to receive, I believe you're going to be blessed, you're going to be empowered, and whatever the need is in your life, it can be met tonight if you only believe. The Bible says in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to him that believes. And Jesus himself teaching in another passage said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. I'm convinced God is going to do something very, very special in your life tonight. We want to get started with our musical guest, and Kevin, it's so good to have you, and I know the Lord's going to use you to bless the people as you sing for us. I think the first song is Jesus Will. Yes, it is. God bless you. Come on, I know it's Friday night, but can we have a little Sunday morning church in here? Wherever you are, just put your hands together like this. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Ooh, oh, oh. The song just says this. Ooh, opens doors. Yeah. 
Come on, it's a church song, so we gotta take it up. Jesus will. Hey, hey, everybody say, oh. Everybody say, oh. that because Jesus will. Whenever the leper cried out and said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean, Jesus said, I will be thou made clean. What a powerful, powerful Lord we serve. And thank you, Kevy, for that powerful song. Well, we've got a great guest with us tonight to get things started. She has an amazing testimony. As a matter of fact, she has testimonies and we all should have that because the Bible said we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so tonight we want to welcome on the Atlanta Live set, Aldrika Boyle. God bless you. Thank you. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you also. Well, let's just start back around 1992. Okay. And tell us a little bit about your story because you have come a long way. Yes. And God has showed himself to be more than enough. Yes, he has. So tell us a little bit about how things kind of started in your journey okay. toward where you are today. Okay, so 1992. So in 1992 is when uh, my husband and I, Barry and Boyle, got married. And uh, I was, I forgot how old I was back then. <laughs> but <laughs> 1992, we got married. So we've been married 32 years. Okay. And uh, he's my best friend. Wow. And so uh, we've been married 32 years, <coughs> and 
uh, during that time after we got married, three years after we were married, uh, we, well, we were believing God to have kids. And so we were standing in faith and believing God and nothing wouldn't work. And so I went to the doctor to see if it was me. He went to see if it was him and we found out it was me. And so um, I took the word of God when the doctors told me uh, that you probably would never have kids. And I said, well, that's not what the words say. That's and, and I told him that, and, and he said, well, okay, but you just probably would never have kids. And so, uh, but then I said, well, I want to try fertility treatment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, before they even did any kind of exam on me or anything, they gave me a prescription for Clomid. And so I took the uh, Clomid, and when I took the fertility medicine, uh, next thing you know, I flared up, and uh, I ended up, that, and they probably was already there, but the fertility medicine made it flare up, and I ended up with multiple cysts and tumors. And I was so sick until I couldn't walk. And uh, so my husband took me back to the doctor, and he said, well, you got to have a hysterectomy. And I said, well, I'm, that's not, I'm believing God to have kids. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but you have multiple cysts and tumors. You must have a hysterectomy, and if you don't, they can burst and, re and, you, and become septic and you can die. Mm. So I'm crying, I'm in pain, but I told the doctor, I said, you can schedule the surgery, mm. but I promise you by Thursday, when it's time to admit me, my body gonna be healed. <laughs> and it's gonna be healed supernaturally. And they just looking at me and saying, I said, well, he said, I sure hope so. So I was in so much pain, I couldn't walk. <coughs> so my husband had to roll me out in the wheelchair. And we in the car going home, and he said, well, you know, it's okay, we can't have it. I said, look, let me tell you something. The word of God say that I've been believing that, that he make me a, a joyful mother and keep house of children. That's yes. what the word say. Yeah. The word say that he'll make perfect those things that concerns me. Now, it concerns me that they saying that we'll never have kids. Yeah. But the word of God said he'll make it perfect. Yeah. And now this is a burden. But the word of God says the burden has been re removed. Yes. And the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. So either we going to believe God or we not. Because <laughs> I believe God. He said, well, okay then. So I had him buy me a, a baby onesie and put it in the closet. <laughs> and, I, and, and a maternity shirt. And I said, you know, this was on a big old Tuesday, and they said I had to Thursday to go back, so I started doing it all. When I say do it all, I got praise and worship. I start marching around the table, the coffee table, saying the battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. I start quoting the word, quoting the word of God and believing God that he will. I say, Lord, I'm like the one with the issue of blood. I say, Father, I imagine myself touching the hem of your garment, and I know you are making me whole. Yes. So during this time, uh, some friends that I worked with, they knew I was believing God to have children, but they didn't know I had to got sick. So one of my friends, uh, she had went to a midweek service, and the pastor said, this particular bottle of oil is going to be used to anoint a lady over us this week. And she just got up and got it for me, not knowing I was home sick. She came back to the office looking for me, and they said, well, she out sick. She came to our house. So when she got there, the anointing of God was already there. Praise and wish it was gone. I started praying that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. I started believing God that he was going to step in and he was going to show up and show out. Yeah. When she got there, the anointing was there. She walked into our home. This was on a Wednesday. She came up in there. She laid hands on me. She laid hands on my spouse. Instantly, the, 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 the pain was gone. I started jumping up and down. Hallelujah. I started, I said, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> I said, no, come on. I said, you don't understand, it's gone. Yes. We went back to the hospital the following morning for them to examine me to see if I still needed surgery. They examined me. The cyst was gone. The tumors was gone. This was January 23rd, 1995. <laughs> and Gabrielle Shalom Boyle was born January 23rd, 1996. <laughs> so when you don't give up and you don't cave in and quit, yeah. God can and he will, but you got to believe. That's it. That's you it. You got to believe. Well, the Bible says that in due season, yes. you shall reap. That's right. If you faint not. That's right. Another translation says if you don't quit. Come on now. So that's the key. <laughs>
So with that being said, God just blessed us so amazingly. Nine years later, we have a, a wonderful son named Barry Boy Jr. Then 11 months later, I was pregnant with Madison. So not only did he open my womb, the floodgates came. <laughs> And I have three amazing children. Yeah. Gabrielle graduated from college, honor student from Savannah State. My son, BJ, our son, BJ, is at Tennessee State. He's now a pilot, uh, a, a private that can uh, fly private planes. He's an honor student. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Madison, is an esthetician school. She's a rock star at school. Three amazing children. Don't give me no trouble. And they love God with all their heart. Hallelujah. All their heart. That's they enough to shout God. about. Yes. <laughs> they don't fire you for God. God. Well, they were born out of the fire Come of God. Now. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> so, with that being said, 19 years later, that same hysterectomy. So, at this time, I'm 46 years old. So, 19 years later, uh, when it was so the, I, I got sick again with the cyst and the tumor. I said, well, okay, I'm through having kids, so it's fine. Let's, let's do it. So I go in to have the hysterectomy. I'm thinking it's going to be great. I'm thinking it's going to be easy. It was robotic surgery. I was going to be out early. It wasn't going to be no big deal. I went in there to have surgery. So the devil got me. He was mad. Yeah. But you can be mad all you want, okay? But he attacked me. I went in to have surgery. After the surgery, when I woke up, I told the nurse, something is wrong. I say, I'm not feeling right. Something is wrong. They say, well, you're going to be okay. You just hit I say, no, something is wrong. The doctor still discharged me and sent me home the two days later. After that, one day after being home, I turned dark, black. Mm. One of my good friends, a nurse practitioner, came over, and she said she needed to go back to the doctor, hospital, because she is bleeding on the inside. She didn't turn black. I was black as your pants. They got me to the hospital. They examined me. They realized I was bleeding internally. I went into surgery. They took me into surgery. When I went into surgery to see where I was bleeding from, I went into liver failure, kidney failure, respiratory failure, and double pneumonia. When I came out, they told my husband that surgery wasn't going to take but two to three hours. It took 23 hours. And then when I did come out, they told him, Call for the family. She only has 72 hours to live. Let them say their goodbyes. So with that being said, that night in ICU, everybody that night died but me. But me. <laughs> and I'll never forget when I I could hear everything going on around me, but I was on the machine, but I knew something was wrong because I couldn't move. I was like I was trapped in there, but I couldn't get out. And so immediately, I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I said, but I know you can and you will. I said, I'm not ready to die. You gave me Madison, BJ, and Gabrielle. And at that time, Gabrielle was a sophomore. Madison was in fifth grade. BJ was in sixth grade. I say, if you allow me just to come back and raise my kids, I will tell the world how you brought me back when they said I wasn't going to live. Then I heard them talking, saying, do you want to take off life support? If she lives, she's going to be on oxygen for the rest of her life. If she lives, she's going to be handicapped. If she lives, she won't have a good quality of life. But my husband knew. I wasn't over 70 years old, and God promised us at least 70. I, lived right. I said, don't you let nobody kill me. <laughs> he knew better. Yeah. And he was, I could hear him over me saying, you better come back, because they want me to take you out this machine. Like, I wanted to be in that condition. Right, right. But I believed. When, so when I finally started getting consciousness, I, I felt myself like back against the wall, but I knew I was in a spiritual battle. Yeah. And I started confessing the word. I said, Lord, I thank you. Eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what you're getting ready to do with me. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that I would, this weapon has been formed, but it will not prosper. Yes. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, as the snow come down and the 
water come down and waters the earth, so shall your word be that's going forth out of my mouth. Yes. It will not return unto you for, but it shall accomplish that which I send it. I send the word forth. So you got to have the word in your heart because yes. I was connected to all kind of machines, but I had it in my heart. So I was quoting the word in my brain and I was quoting the, the scriptures and, and confessing the scriptures and believing God that Jesus' blood that died upon the cross was going through my body and was healing everything in my body that was pulling out that poison because the blood that was coming out of me was black. My eyes was yellow. I was connected to all these machines, but I started believing. I said, Lord, I thank you. I'm coming out whole. Nothing missing nothing, and nothing, nothing broken. broken. And I'm here to tell you, then they said she had been here six months to a year. When I woke up, I was determined not to be a cripple. I was determined to not be handicapped. And I confess the word, and I believe God at his word. Yes. If you believe, all things are possible. Yes. Lord, this is a mountain, but you said it will be moved. I have the faith more of a mustard seed. I have a faith of a whole garden. <laughs> <laughs> it will be moved. Yes. And I thank you, Lord. And God not only moved, he moved supernaturally yes. until doctors and nurses was coming in that room and was saying, this is amazing. She's coming out. This is amazing. Yes. And when they pulled that tube out of me, I never forget that morning. They said, if the tube don't come out today, she's going to have to get a trach. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I would not have a trach. When they pulled that tube out of me, it was exactly 21 days. Mm. And 21 days, God brought me back whole. Mm. Mm. Whole. Nothing missing. What a miracle. And nothing broken. Yes. So I give God praise because I promised him I would tell this story. Everywhere I go, every opportunity that I get. Yeah. And so I thank God for allowing me the opportunity today to give his word, to let the world know I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what it is. The word <coughs> works for you. Yeah. It's do you believe? Because do you truly believe all things are possible? Do you truly believe that God can and he will? Yeah. I don't care what it looks like. Because if you truly believe, sit back and watch God move. Well, Drew, the thing that really stands out to me, and you said it more than once, the Word. Yes. You spoke the Word. You yes. thought the Word. You meditated on the Word. And then you coupled that yes. with the blood. Yes. Let the blood flow. Yes. But you have to have a revelation of that yes. for it to work. For it to work. So what would you say to somebody right now that may be in the fight of their life? It may not be the same thing you went through. Right. But whatever they're going through, they feel like it's going to take them out. What would you say to them tonight? Well, what I say is you have to take the word of God and apply it to your life and make it personal. Yeah. Mm. You need, in Psalms 138, when it says the law will make perfect those things that concerns me, put your name there. Yeah. The Lord will make perfect those things that concerns Aldrica. Yeah. Put your name there. He wants you to know. He want to know that you believe him. He want to know that you said, he said, if, if that, he, that he was the vine and we was the branches. If we abide in him and his word abide in us, then we should ask what we will and it shall be done. So if you take the scriptures and apply them to your life and you have to make it personal, so they got to get in the Word yes. and get the Word in them. And get it in them. Yeah, that's the only way it works. Yes. And the scripture you quoted out of Psalm 138, 8, it, it, where it says the law. Yes. They got to understand that's talking about the Word. Yes. Because that was the only thing they had at that time to reference as the Word was the law, the Torah, mm -hmm. the Pentateuch, those uh, first five books of the Bible right. and then things that were coming by revelation mm -hmm. and came to David, of course, that are written in the Psalms. But David said it is the word that's going to perfect it. Yes. That's what's going to complete the miracle. That's mm -hmm. what's going to make me whole. Yes. And that's what whoever may be watching tonight needs in their life. Yes. Would you pray for them? Yes, I will. Amen.
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just come to you right now, dear Lord, first giving you all the glory, the honor, and praise for the answers in your praise, Father, as we worship you and glorify your most holy and righteous name. Yes. We just uplift you on high and we magnify you, Father, for you are so worthy to be praised. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that sit upon the throne. Lord, I just thank you that if anyone out there that needs you right now, Father, we thank you that you are making perfect those things that concern them, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you said in your word, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, then they should ask what they will and it shall be done. Yes. You didn't say it could be done. You didn't say it might be done. You said it shall be done. Yes. So we thank you, mm -hmm. Lord. I tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Yes. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, give Christ your heart. Give him your life. Then take the holy word of God and apply it to your life and God will walk and move in your life yes. supernaturally. Thank you. As you trust and believe in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All oh, powerful. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Yes. Thank you for speaking the word. Yes. And thank you for the prayer of faith, for it saves the sick. Yes. And the Lord will raise them up. Amen. God bless amen. you. We love thank you. you. Thank God for your life. Right now, we're going to our special music guest, and Kevy's going to be singing for us. The goodness of God. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God it's all my life you have been faithful all my of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. In the goodness of God. Oh, 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 Of the goodness of God. Good. 
Welcome to the Atlanta Live Prayer Room. Our prayer warriors are here. We're ready to pray with you at 770-300-9828. If you have not yet given your life to the Lord, we encourage you tonight to surrender all to him. Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 reads, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt Believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you would like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior tonight, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I believe Christ died for my sins. I repent tonight, and I turn my life over to you, and I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, lead me, and guide me as I surrender my all to you. If you prayed that prayer tonight, give us a call at 770 9828. We would love to pray with you as you begin this new walk with Jesus Christ. And now we're going back to the studio. All right. Thank you so much for that update. And I pray that you prayed that prayer because if you simply call upon the name of the Lord, believing, the Bible said you shall be saved. It's not real complicated. He wants to help you more than you need help. So call on his name right where you are. As a matter of fact, I was handed these earlier, different people that have called in that have prayer requests. Here's Cynthia needs a job. Here's for uh, someone called in about a man that's missing in South Carolina, and they don't know where he is. We know God's able and believe angels are out right now ministering. Someone asked for prayer for a husband who needs physical healing. Someone else, a man that's struggling with dementia and just needs a touch from heaven and also encouragement for his caregivers. And then uh, Julio dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. That's what the number on the screen is all about. You being able to call and not only share your prayer requests, but know that there's somebody that will pray with you. So if you have a need in your life, whether it's spiritual, emotional, mental, financial, physical, doesn't matter what it is, call 770-300-9828. Someone's waiting to pray with you and to believe God for your miracle right now. Tonight we have with us two amazing gifts in the kingdom, and they're going to bless you, I know, by the testimony and the Word of God that's in their heart and life, and we want to welcome them tonight to Atlanta Live, Apostle Donald Graham and Prophetess Anita. God bless you both. So good to see you tonight. Amen. So tell us a little bit about what God's doing in your life. It's, it's an amazing season in our lives. We have been really on the go a lot. We just got back from Botswana. We had a two-week crusade in Botswana, and God really moved. It was really, really powerful. I've been going into Africa 20 years now and seeing God do some amazing things. But this time when I went in, it was, it was different this time because 
um, the Lord allowed me to discover something that's happening. When you talk about the body of Christ, you're talking worldwide. Yes. And we in America, we have to be very, very sensitive and careful to understand that a lot of countries, especially third world countries, uh, follow America. Yeah. And the Christian TV, we have to be very, very sensitive and conscious that these countries are, uh, I hate to say mimicking, but that's a lot of yeah, what they do. They're imitating. They're, they're mimicking. And uh, in Botswana, the second night of the crusade, we were in Francistown, Botswana, which is right on the border of Zimbabwe. Right. So a lot of times the people could sneak over from Zimbabwe, come across because they know I'm coming and the crusade has just been packed. But this time, this particular time, I had a chance to talk to a lot of the pastors, prophets, and bishops after the service because mm -hmm. they had a whole lot of them and they just wanted me to minister to them in the room. And a lot of them, in the discussions we had, they began to say, well, we've been praying for this and we've been praying for that. We've been praying for this and that. So as me and my wife listened, we were really blown away because a lot of the information they receive about what they're praying for is coming from America. Mm -hmm. Now in Botswana, of course, the internet is not that powerful and they don't have a lot of access to TV. So the internet is the only thing they have. In listening to them and talking with them, I kept hearing two different prayers and it really bothered me. And I said, Lord, a kingdom divided absolutely cannot stand. No. And God, I'm sitting here amazed, uh, looking through the eyes of God and him looking at us and we as his people praying two different things. And I said, well, Lord, what is the problem here? Uh, we got one group may be accurate, the other group is praying amiss. So God, what do I teach for the next three nights in Francistown to help these leaders come together on the same page? Yep. And he says, son, the problem with most of them is they don't have the Holy Ghost. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, God, what do you mean? He said, they don't have the Holy Ghost. A lot of them are moving in intellectual Christianity. That's come on. Where they have been to college. They've got their degrees. They've got their master's in Christian counseling. They have their doctorate degrees in divinity, but they don't know me. Mm. They've gotten saved, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. That's so good. when they're praying, they're praying out of their intellect, yeah. out of their opinion, out of their emotion, or out of of what they heard. Mm -hmm. So I said, God, please give me what to teach. And the next night I began coming out of Romans the eighth chapter and we did Romans 89 where if the spirit of God would be in you. And then it come down to say the spirit of Christ would be in you. And when we researched the spirit of Christ, we found out that Christ meant the anointing. Yeah. And that Christ had uh, the spirit of God in him without measure. Yes. And so if we in fact are going to be Christians, we got to go all the way in. We got to get some salvation, then we got to be filled with his spirit. Yes, because yes. the Bible even tells us that if we're filled with his spirit, then we know not what we ought to pray. Yeah. But he'll make intercession for us yes. that we can pray on one accord. Yeah. And I said, okay, God, so the next three nights, I began to teach about this, and it was amazing how many people got filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they don't know, but I found out that a lot of preachers are teaching it but they're not moving in it. That's true. They're teaching that the Holy Spirit exists, but they're not talking about the infilling yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I was blown away because, you know, we as preachers, we go into Revelation and God give us these awesome revelations and we, we, we itch to teach them. But God said, no, no, I need you to go back to the basis because these people, the reason the division in their kingdom prayers is because they don't have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so I prayed and people start getting the Holy Ghost left and right. It was just it's amazing. And the leaders start getting the Holy Ghost. It yep. was really, really powerful. So I said, well, Lord, when I got back to my shack, I said, well, Lord, is this happening in America? Hmm. And he says, absolutely. Yes, sir. Because the Holy Spirit has been escorted out of the churches. Hmm. Come on. And a lot of times this is happening because churches now have become professional institutions mm -hmm. where we're going to get you in at 11, you're going to be out by 1231, and they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to enter in and do what he wants to do yeah. in the services. And another problem we have, and as I said, God, this is terrible. He said, son, it's happening in America, and this is why in Africa they're 
mimicking the 11 to 12, 30, the 11 to 1, and not allowing the Holy Spirit to come in. So I, I said, okay, God, I'm starting to pray now about bringing the message of the Holy Spirit back to America. Mm -hmm. And I know America, we went way down the road. We're in the kingdom. We're into different revelations. We're into prosperity. But what has happened over time, the principles and the basic foundations have crept out of the church. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost has left the church. Jesus Christ has left the church. And we find ourselves now running professional institutions well, instead of God-led churches. Yeah, you, well, you can't really have a church. Uh -huh. We can call it church. Yes. But you can't really have a church yes. without the Holy Spirit hmm. because He is the administrator. He's the one. <laughs> He's the one. Yeah. So this was very, uh, it wasn't shocking to me, but I found it was necessary. Yeah. Because a lot of churches, even in America, of course, I'm a researcher and I'm always praying for leaderships in America. And the Lord showed me that now we got a dilemma where not only Jesus and the Holy Spirit is not being introduced into people's lives in church, but churches have become political arenas. Mm. So where um, you have a conglomerate of people that believe a thing and it may not even be connected to God, yeah. may not even be connected to the Holy Spirit. And so we've got to go back to the basis. That's good. We got to go to the basic and we got to be sure that the people are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because if they're not, then their prayer lives would be drastically affected and your church should be affected because of the lack of prayer yeah. from the saints. Well, it's really no different than if you have a people or a pastor mm. that knows about God. Ah but they don't know God. Mm. They don't know God. That intimacy has to be there. Absolutely. When it goes back to Genesis talking about the relationship between Adam and Eve, uh -huh. and when they begin to multiply as God had instructed them, mm. it said Adam knew Eve. Ah. That's intimacy. Y yada. And it's the same way we have to be with God. Yes. And you can't really be intimate huh. until you get to what you're talking about tonight. Absolutely. There has to be a real understanding of relationship with the person yes. and the power Come on. of the Holy Spirit. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it took me even to Jeremiah 1 and 5. I preached this one time and the Lord revealed this revelation to me. He said, before you were born, I knew you. Mm -hmm. When I dug into the word knew, it came from the Hebrew word called yada. Mm -hmm. which means to have an intimate yes. connection with God, which means before we came in the earth, we were in an intimate place with God. Yeah. Coming into the earth, it becomes our responsibility to get back to that intimate place with God. And so as leaders, it's our responsibility to me to lead the people back to that intimate place with God as opposed to having an intimate place with your leader. Yeah. Because, because if we do that, then we're producing people that know idolatry but don't know God. That's good. That's good. Well, what you just said is so important mm. because there are a lot of people, again, they follow Paul, mm. they follow Apollos, Come on. but they don't know Christ. Come on. And that's not acceptable. Right. It just doesn't work. Yes. Jesus, before he ascended, gave his final instructions to the church. And of mm. course, a part of that was the Great Commission. Yes. But he said, don't do any of that mm. until you get to Jerusalem ah. and you wait there Come on. until you receive the other comforter Come on that I'm going to send you so that you are empowered Come on. to do these things. Yes. And it's like Zechariah had prophesied. It's not by might. Not by it's spirit. not by natural power or ability, but it's by the Spirit with a capital S. Ah, <laughs> representing deity. Yes, yes. And so that's beautiful because the Lord gave me a prophecy about 12 years ago. I was in prayer and we do a lot of fasting and prayer. And I was Got in prayer him. and the Lord said, Son, there's coming a season now upon America where the church is going to implode. Mm, mm. And I was like, well, God, what does that mean and what do we need to do? He said, implosion is going to happen. There's going to be a great divide in the church. It took me to 1 Timothy 4th chapter, where it said, the Spirit speaketh expressly. In the latter days, many will be drawn from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And I said, well, God, what can we do to, you know, 
prevent this thing from happening. And he said, son, it's important that you remind the people there's something that cannot be excavated from the church. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's prayer. Right. That's fasting. Yep. That's studying of the word. And that's loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. When love leaves the church, mm. then the church begins to divide. Mm -hmm. There can be no division if we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Spirit is in place, prayer is in place, fasting is in place, but love is in place, there can be no implosion amongst the church. Right. And that means that right now in this season, we're seeing a great divide in the church. And that means the church has lost her first love. Mm -hmm. Talked about the book of Revelation. Yep. Yep. You're doing great things. You're doing wonderful things. But I have something against you. Yep. You've lost your first love. Yep. If love remains in the church, then a lot of this division and separation we're seeing happening would not exist. Well, many years ago, one of my mentors, Dr. T.L. Osborne, made a statement. Oh, I love him. He said, there is no power mm. that equals love power. Wow. And of course, he probably seen more firsthand miracles uh, than, than any anybody. man that ever lived other Absolutely. than Jesus yeah. uh, that I know of because his ministry in other countries yes. was so powerful and so received. Yes. And uh, the stories and the testimonies and the miracles phenomenal. Yes. You, you know, unless you knew the man and his integrity, yes. uh, he and Daisy both, his wife, you, you would think that can't be true. Oh, that yeah. didn't really happen. Oh, but yeah. it happened because the people received the word of God ah. and the Holy Spirit and the word agree. Come on. And there was a flow there yes. that created the dynamic expression uh, of signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. Yeah. Another thing that happened to me, I think we were, I was in Australia and I was there for a five night crusade. Mm -hmm. Lord said, well, for the first two days, I just want you to teach mm -hmm. about the Holy Spirit and the gifts mm -hmm. because in Australia, they don't, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. A little more reserved. Yeah, 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 a little <laughs> bit more conservative. And so I did that and I said, okay, God, now what? He said, the next three nights, I want you to move in signs and wonders. He said, but there's a revelation you gotta get. I said, well, what's that, Father? He said, every time Jesus in the New Testament began to move in miracles, it said he was first moved with compassion. That's it. And I said, he said, it's impossible to be moved in compassion if you don't have love mm. for the people. That's it. And so I said, okay, God, pour into me the love for the people. You know, and, and I'm not saying this to be facetious. I was the only colored person there yeah. <laughs> in the whole crowd. We talk with 2,000, 3,000 people a night. And he said, son, I sent you for this reason. Yeah. And I cried out all that night, Lord, fill me with the love. And so when the people started to walk in front of me, I felt myself weeping a lot. Yeah. And the weeping was a compassion moving in me. And we saw so many healings, so many miracles happen in that crusade. And, and, and it's so important that we you know, keep love yeah. in the game. Very important. Lester Summerall made a statement that stayed with me for decades yeah. and still to this day. He said that whenever you see people, it doesn't matter where you find them, mm. see them as living souls <sighs> for whom Jesus died. <sighs> and so when you see beyond the exterior, mm -hmm. which is just a house, yeah. and you can paint your house any color you want to paint yeah, it, yes. you know? And it's the same way. We can be made out of anything that God wants to make. You know, the, on planet Earth, there's five different kinds of dirt mm, okay. or sand okay. as far as colors. Okay. There's black, yep. there's brown, yes. there's red, red, there's white, mm. and there's a beige color. That's wow. true, that's true. So he took a little here and a little there. He just, he said, these are the houses I want to live in. Hallelujah. And when you go back to the original Adam, yes. the first Adam, mm -hmm. he had what you're talking about. Yes. He had the same connection on earth he had before he came here. <laughs> but when he gave over the dominion mandate that God had given him to mm. Satan and Satan took charge of that thing, mm. yes. then all of a sudden, we became subject yes. instead of being an authority. But thank God Hallelujah. there was another Adam. Hallelujah. <laughs>
And Jesus came. We receive yes. it. And we have that dominion mandate restored if we'll take him up on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the key. Yeah. That's the key. Wow. Yes. I wish we had all night. Hey. I look, you get preachers together. And I'm sorry, Prophet. It's really okay. easy. We don't okay. get to hear from you. But, oh, hopefully can do this again. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Yes, well, sir. God bless you guys. And I, I pray that the Lord will continue to increase and multiply all that you're doing and that people will find out. How can they find out about New Wine Ministries? New Wine Christian Center is located at 4651 Flat Shoals Road in Union City, Georgia. And the zip code is 30291. So Union City, mm -hmm. yes. New Wine yes. Christian, Christian Center. Center. Christian Center, all yes. right. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a good church where you can be ministered to mm -hmm. and be fed and be empowered, Hallelujah. You need to look up New Wine Christian Center. Hallelujah. Because I sense, see, the Bible tells us no, no man after the flesh, uh -huh. but after the spirit. Yeah. What I sense Hallelujah. right here, Hallelujah. that's what you need. <laughs> so you need to get in on it. Love Hallelujah. you guys. Love you. God bless you. Okay. Maybe singing for us back in God's grace. <laughs> back in God's good grace. You may have made some mistakes, you may have messed up, but we always know that he welcomes us back home in his open arms. And that's all this song talks about, is just being back, one with him, back in God's good grace. Sit down, relax, and tell me just how you've been. Please, please forgive my wrong. I haven't seen you in a while. It's been so long. Yeah. Back in God. Amazing grace, I made it through, made it through, back where I, where I, faith, faith, you never left my side, even in the lonely nights that I That you're in my life, my soul can make a bow. In the Lord, in the Lord, back in the God. Oh, so amazing grace. You know, I made it through. Yes, I did. To the other side, where I. Back in your grace, in the right place, yes I am, I made it through, I made it through to the other side, where I, I oh yeah, yeah, thank God it's over, yeah. Back around, back around, back around, back around, yeah. And I found what I need. Oh, back in, back in, back in, yes I am. I made it through. I made it through, I made it through, yeah, oh, yes I did, oh, back in God's good grace, back in God's good grace, back in the right place, thank God I made it through, I made it through.
am. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. What a great, great song. And we're thankful. We're thankful. You know, God is so good and constantly amazes us at how he works and how he moves. And uh, Apostle and Prophetess still here on the set with me. And I want us to just come into agreement okay. that tonight this God mm. of signs, wonders, and miracles Hallelujah. will show up in the life of those that are watching. Hallelujah. Because the thing I learned a long time ago was even though there may be thousands of people watching, mm. I'm talking to that one person mm. who needs a touch. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. And so could you agree with me and would you pray yes. for those that are watching tonight that whatever the need is, Absolutely. the power of the Holy Spirit will visit them now Hallelujah. and magnify Jesus in whatever way they need, whether it's a healer, a restorer, a mender, Hallelujah. He'll, he'll come to their rescue. Hallelujah. Let's just agree. Absolutely. Even before we begin, the lady named Cynthia that's looking for the job, in two weeks you're going to have the job. The Lord said he's going to bless you, and he, you're going to recover all. Amen. Father, we touch and agree now with the man of God, with my wife. Father, there are people that are watching us now that have needs. But my Lord, you said you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Father, I pray that those that are watching, even the young man depressed, I rebuke that depressive yes. spirit off of his life yes. in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose him even now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray those that need healings on the air right now. I pray your supernatural power move in their life. We rebuke cancer. Yes. We rebuke diabetes. Yes. We command it to go yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Father, I pray even let the testimonies come mm. from the lung cancer yes. now that I see clearing up as we touch and agree. Father, I pray long life mm. over your people. Yes. We rebuke premature death yes. in the name of Jesus. Father, we just came back from Botswana and you extended so many lives there of people that only had hours to live. Father, I pray, let that same anointing penetrate the airwaves now. Even those now that are watching, lift up your hands and receive the miracles of God. For the Lord loves you 